continue with this discussion question from the previous video. Uh, so I hope you all discuss with your classmates. So what is the answer for this one? Yeah, so that's A. So what we are looking for is, we're looking for the sum of each element greater than the average for the array. So since that's a comparison operator, so that's why they either return true or false. So since you take the sum, so then that will mean how many true, then they will give you the sum. So this one mean how many number of the elements will be greater than the average, divide by the total number of the array. So here you see, we talk about the distribution, right? Uh, like we see this one, okay? So if they are symmetric, so then your average and the median, they will be right in the center. However, we told you if they have the more value on the right, uh, so this one we call that the right skewed. So then they will move the average toward to the right. Uh, remember, that's the question we asked you before. This average, uh, these two distribution, which one average is bigger? So that's why since here they have bigger value, so that's why they will move the average to the right. Since you move the average to the right, uh, just like this one, uh, you have more bigger value on the right, so that's why the average will move to the right. On the other hand, they will have less number greater than the average. So then before median and the average, if they are symmetrically, they are on the same location. So median is 50%. So since your average moved toward to the right, so then you have less than half of the number will be greater than the average. So that's why you divide by the total number of in the array. So they will be less than 50%. Yeah, so that's our discussion question. Uh, so I hope that helped you to understand. So then you can see um, in this lecture, we talk about center and the spread. So the center actually is if your distribution is symmetrical, then the median and the average, they are both in the center. But sometimes if they have a little skewed from the distribution, so then actually your average um, kind of they will move. So that's we talk about average and the median. That's for the first part. So the second part spread, how we will see that. Uh, so in order to see the how the distribution spread for all the number, so that's the next topic we want to look at. So we will look at the standard deviation. So what is the standard deviation? Because we want to find a way to define the variability. So we want to see how the data, the shape of the distribution. So then they say, okay, you want to see the variation. So how to see the variability. So how about we just subtract each other on each number, bigger num biggest number minus the smallest number. Okay. But this one just give us the range, how wide the range is for those data but also only for the biggest number and smallest number. They didn't tell us how much the shape look like for the distribution. So that's we cannot, the other plan is, how about we measure variability around the mean? Because remember the definition for earlier our mean is the balance for the distribution. So then if we can see all the number, how far from then to the mean, so maybe we can better understand how the distribution look like or measure the variability. So we need to figure out a way to quantify that. So let's see how we calculate standard deviation. Okay, so the first thing, let's get our value. Okay, so we have uh, so many numbers. Okay, so then for those numbers, of course, we can find our mean. Okay, so we got our average. So deviation, like earlier we say, we say each number, how far they from the average. Okay, so that's called the deviation is value minus the average number. Okay, so then we add our deviation into there. 
Uh, so then you can see from this on uh, almost 1200 row, then you have all the stand, uh, deviation. Okay, so this deviation just using the value minus the average. Also, uh, maybe also uh, if they have the negative number, just mean the value less than the average. So positive number, that means that value is greater than the average. So then that's you got deviation for each value. Okay, what happens if we add them all together? Oh, actually here they give you, yeah, actually this one is almost zero. Okay, but because all the deviation when they subtract, uh, so I think that's because here our average we're using the decimal number is a lot. Okay, so that's why they have all those decimal number. But uh, this one you can see they can't, they, they are 1.77 to the 10 to the negative 11th power. So that's kind of like 0 0.000017, okay? So actually it's kind of equivalent, almost zero. Supposed it should be almost zero, right? Because remember, we say what is the average? Average is the balance for all the distribution. So actually, if you just find the difference, you are not taking the absolute value. You just subtract by each other. Of course, then they will even out. So that's why here, when we find the deviation, right? If we have the positive number and the negative number, then we add them together. At the end, they will cancel out each other because from the average, the distance from the average. So instead, we're doing that. So we don't do the deviation using the subtraction only. Uh, how about we square? each deviation. Yeah, so then we can get all the number is positive. So after we got the square deviation from all the number, okay, so then we find the average from the deviation square. This one we call variance. Okay, so the variance is the average of the square deviation from average. So then our standard deviation is using the variance taking the square root. So you can see here we can do this way to do step by step to find the standard deviation. Or of course we have our numpy function called std. So why we need to take the square root? Uh, so one thing is, the reason we take the square at the beginning for the deviation, we want to not add all the deviation together, they cancel out each other. So that's find the square, we, go, we got the positive number. But if your data, they have the unit, uh, for example, we say the difference is pound. Okay, so you have 100 pound, all the weight for the different per, different mom. So then you minus the average. Okay, so then actually the standard deviation, the difference is still pound. But you square, they become pound square. So then to using the standard deviation, we want them to have the same unit as our data. So then we square root back. Uh, so that's the standard deviation. So as you can see, standard deviation measure roughly how far the data are from their average. So standard deviation usually will also say the root mean square of the deviation from the average. So SD is not as the RMS, so that's mean root mean square of the deviation. So you have few steps, right? So we find the average for our data. So then each number minus the average, then we square, uh, then we square that. Then we find the average, that's the variance. So then we take the square root. So that's the standard deviation after the square root has the same unit as the data. The most important thing you will ask, why we use the standard deviation? That's two main reasons. The first reason is later we will cover from this lecture. So no matter what the shape of your distribution, the bulk of the data are in the range, average 
plus or minus a few standard deviation. Uh, so later we will show you that uh, theory. So then we can kind of have the proportion to know all the data we think that average plus or minus the um, either two, three, four standard deviation. Uh, so that's the first reason we will go over in this lecture. The second reason we will talk about next time. So that is specific for the bell shape distribution. So then they have specific standard deviation. The number match the um, proportion for the distribution. That's the, the first reason. That should be chef equality. So what's that? So in this inequality, they told you no matter what the shape of the distribution, the box of the data are in the range average plus minus a few standard deviation. So what is this a few? So that's Chevy Chef's inequality. No matter what the shape of distribution, the proportion of the value in the range mean average plus minus z that's an integer number b one two three four five something like that so then multiply the standard deviation on the other hand that's mean according to your standard de uh, how many standard deviation you are looking at for example two so using the average plus two standard deviation and use the mean minus two standard deviation you have at least one minus so one divided by two square is one minus one fourth so that will be three quarter so you have three quarters of the data they are all in the range of mean minus two times standard deviation and mean plus two times standard deviation. So that's the Shelby Chef inequality. So we see using that uh, we calculate. So here is we call the average plus minus a few standard deviation. We use the z equal to two, three, four, and the five. So we catch calculate. So here the z equal to two. So that's one minus one fourth. So that's me. The average plus or minus two standard deviation, you have at least 75% data within in this range. So to help you see better, so I just add the Z uh, here on the left. So then between the three standard, three standard deviation plus minus from the average, so then you can see there will be about eight nines. So almost 90%, or we can say at least 88.88%. So then within the four standard deviation, it's 93.75. So average plus minus five standard deviation is 96. And this one is for all the distribution, because we don't care what distribution look like. They were in the range. Let's see the demonstration. Uh, so let's see, is that true or not? So the Chevy Chef uh, inequality, we see the example from the Alameda newborn babies uh, table again. So in this table, we have different column. You see, you have baby weight, the pregnancy days, the mom's age, height, and the pregnancy weight. Okay, so then you can see all the histogram like this. Uh, so this one, you can see the birth weight. Uh, that's actually like the bell curve. Okay, very symmetric. Uh, so the same thing, the um, pregnancy date. So then you have the mom's age. So this one is kind of good, good bell, but still you see they kind of toward to the right. Okay, so this one is more um, bell curve. Okay, so then you can see the most one, they are not so bell curve in the center. Uh, we can see that's a pregnancy weight. So how about we just use this one? Uh, because usually the bell shape distribution, they have more special standard deviation distribution. So we're just using this one is kind of not normal on uh, distribution. Okay, so using this one, uh, we see the standard deviation. We find the mean, we find the standard deviation. 
So you can see the mean is about 128. Uh, standard deviation is about 20. So we just see here, that's using z equal to 3 to see. Okay, so z equal to 3. So that's mean earlier we see here, uh, your z equal to 3, about 88.88% um, .88 will be there. Okay, so then we see here, and uh, we try to calculate and to see really how many rows. Wow, then we have 98%. Okay, so that's why we say earlier is at least, so at least 88.88% .88 uh, will be in that range. But then here even more. Okay, so that's what we will see uh, here. Okay. So then, yeah, I want to show you all of the other um, label as well. Uh, but we are over 15 minutes. So let me stop here, then we'll continue in the next video.